Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. All right, get out your King James Bibles, and we're going to do some reading. I don't know what to call this Bible lesson, but it's, uh, I guess it's along the lines of, what is our purpose? You know, God's creation. All right, so let's take a look at a couple of verses. And we'll kickstart this off. In the last book of the Bible, Revelation, which means to reveal, by the way, you know, people, uh, they read this and they say, well, I don't understand it. Well, if you're a, what they call a New Testament Christian, and you've never bothered to read any of the books that are before the book of Matthew, Matthew's the beginning of the New Testament, by the way, uh, much of the symbolism of revelation, which means to reveal, comes from the Old Testament. The Old Testament was shadow of shadows of the New Testament. So if you've never bothered to read the Old Testament, well, when you get to the Symbolism of Revelation, well, of course you're not going to understand. Can you pick up a novel that's, I don't know, 100 pages long and then read the last 25 pages and think you understand the book? No. It doesn't work like that. Well, the Bible's the same way. But, uh, you know, these... Uh, Satanic pastors with their uh, uh, bought and paid for demon nominations, they do their best to hide the truth from people. You know, if you don't understand the Bible, the best thing you can do is go to the book of James, chapter 1, and it says, If any of you lack understanding, let him ask of God. Ask the Lord for understanding. And then read. He'll give it to you. You know, that's why I've noticed all the different Bible versions. They change the words. Of course, they say they do this for copyright purposes. Uh, but the, I think the real purpose is, is so that certain words and certain phrases are tied into other parts of the Bible. And when you change those words and phrases, you don't make the connection. So that's how I look at it. But the King James is the only Bible that I know of that, you know, when you read the symbolism of the New Testament, and if you'd read the Old Testament and you see the same symbolism, it'll make sense. You'll say, oh, yeah, I read that in, you know, Exodus. Uh, in um, Exodus, God said he took Israel on eagle's wings and brought them out of the land of Egypt. And I'm paraphrasing. Did a huge eagle really land and take over a million people out of Egypt? No. It's a figure of speech, you know. Sort of like when a guy looks at a girl and says, wow, she's a fox, you know. Figure of speech, right? She, she doesn't have four legs and a tail, but, uh, you know, I'm using secular terms. But in Revelation 12, the Lord says he takes the woman on eagle's wings into the wilderness. Well, when you know what the Exodus was, when God took Israel out of Egypt into the wilderness, and then it tells you in Revelation 12 that the end time church, the woman, is going to be led into the wilderness on eagle's wings. Wow, that makes sense. Yeah, okay. You know. And uh, it says she's nourished for a time, times, and half a time. What did God nourish the people of Israel with? 
in Exodus? Well, they had water and they had manna. Will the same thing happen in Revelation 12? I'm pretty, pretty sure of it. You know, so I encourage everybody to spend quiet time, go through the Bible, you know, and ladies, those of you that don't have believing husbands, I feel for you, you know, do the best you can, uh, teach the kids the best you can, and uh, for as long as I can, I'm here for you, you know, and like I say, I'm an amateur, I don't get paid. I mean, occasionally somebody sends me a, uh, a gift. I appreciate it very much, but, you know, I don't beg for it, you know. So I'm an amateur. Nobody pays me to do this. So, all right, Revelation, uh, we're going to go to chapter 4. And let's take a look at that real quick. All right, let's go to Revelation chapter 4 and verse 1. After this I looked, and behold, a door, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was, as it were, of a trumpet, talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. Huh, a door was opened in heaven. Oh, where do we read about that? Let's see. Now, one of the nice things about the King James Bible is that oftentimes, the if you look up a word, the first time it's used in the King James, and you look in the uh, in the verse or the scriptures or in the context of the area, a lot of times it'll shed light on what the word means or, yeah, well, you know, its meaning. So the first time the word door appears in the King James that I can find is Genesis 4 and verse 7. The Lord is speaking to Cain, you know, Cain who slew Abel. And he says, Genesis 4, 7, If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin, sin lieth at the door. Sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. Huh. Sin lieth at the door, and unto thee shall be his desire. Is sin a him? And thou shalt rule over him. Um, it's not in the Bible, but I once read, I don't remember if it was a rabbi's writings or what. And yes, I studied a lot of rabbi's writings in times past. But there's actually somebody that said that uh, there was a devil, a demon, if you will, named Sin. I don't know how true that is, but hey, makes it you know, could be, but uh, sin lieth at the door, and unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. Huh. So that's the first time we have a door where sin lies. But then, in John chapter 10, there's another door, and I think I would rather have this door. Well, before we go to John chapter 10 and read about the real door, let's read about, uh, hear about the other door. You know, I was a, uh, grew up in the late 60s, early 70s, and they had a group called The Doors, Jim Morrison, and um, 
little did I know about Hollywood and how they were trying to pollute our minds. But uh, he lived in Florida. I went to the same high school that he attended when he was in Florida, Melbourne High School. And uh, he, uh, oh, I think he drank himself to death when he was, what, like late 20s or whatever. I actually knew somebody uh, older than me that uh, had actually gone to school with him and was pals with him. But I never knew how they mock everything. I mean, here it is. This guy did a concert in Miami where I lived also, prior to Melbourne, and uh, pulled down his pants and took a dump, number two, on stage. And everybody thought that was so cool. Oh, yeah. He got arrested for that, you know. And um, I was a big Doors and Jimi Hendrix fan. And um, I bought a bootleg album with Hendrix and Jim Morrison, I thought, oh, this should be pretty good. Well, it consisted of some kind of jam session that they did. And you know what it consisted of? It consisted of, I don't mean to be vile, but uh, Jim Morrison basically screaming, effer in the ass. I mean, like for five minutes that's all he said effort in the ass effort in the ass i was like i wasn't even a even close to being a, a christian back then and i thought wow this guy's really vile of course i think he was like 28 or 29 when the lord let him die you know but uh the door they were mocking the real door so let's find out what the real door is yeah, they were the doors to hell. And I did. I liked their music, but uh, back then, but I don't I can't stomach that stuff anymore. John chapter 10 verse 1. Verily verily I, Jesus, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door, by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door, is the shepherd of the sheep. And I hope you know who the shepherd of the sheep is. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. Isn't it wonderful? The great shepherd knows his sheep by name. And when he puts forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. This parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things they were which he spoke unto them. Then Jesus, then said Jesus unto them, Again, verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. There you go. All right, let's go to Revelation 4. Verse 1, After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. Get it? The door to heaven, the great shepherd, the sheep. Let's go to verse 2. 
And immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. Now, there is one throne, a throne, but you're either going to appear, everybody's going to appear before this throne. It'll be either the judgment seat of Christ, which is for those that are washed in the blood, or the great white throne judgment, which is bad news for those like Cain. So, verse 3. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sard sardine stone. And there was a rainbow round about the throne in sight like unto an emerald. And I'll guarantee you that's not that rainbow that the Sodomites uh, love to throw around. You know, they... They're mocking the Lord. When the Sodomites have their little rainbow flag or their little rainbow behind their little get-togethers like the uh, tranny uh, story time at the li library, if you haven't heard about that, write me. I'll, I'll send you something that'll, well, if you're a true believer, it'll disgust you. They love to mock the Lord. Boy, your day is coming, people. And I'm not talking about the sheep. Oh, by the way, today is May 23rd, the Sabbath day. Uh, did you hear about the church that was uh, set on fire? They refused to uh, the uh, they refused to close over this so-called Corona thing. Um, they wanted to to meet. I don't know if it was a good church or not. But uh, the building burned to the ground. So uh, I hope the uh, kosher insurance company took a nice hit. I hope they had insurance on it. But uh, yeah, I don't know if it's a real church or not. But all right. Uh, John 10, verse 4. And round about the throne, the throne of Christ, were four and twenty seats, and upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. Now, who are these people? Mm, personally, I think it's the twelve apostles and the twelve tribes of Israel. That's That would be my guess. If you think it's something different, eh, you're your guess is just as good as mine. But the uh, the 12 apostles are going to be at the 12 gates uh, of the New Jerusalem judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Let's see if we can find that real quick. In Matthew 19.28, And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration... That's, you know, when you get your new body. In the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ah, ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Bingo. All right, in Revelation 21, 12, New Jerusalem, right? and had a wall great and high, and had twelve gates, and at the gates twelve angels, and names written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. There is no thirteenth Gentile gate, contrary to the demon nominational churches. You know, that's funny, that they, they'll do all in their power to con-, con Vince you that the Antichrists are Israel. And then they'll fight tooth and nail to deny that uh, Christians are God's chosen people, but they'll do everything in their power to get, get you to believe that the Christ haters are God's chosen people. Revelation 21 14. 
And the wall of the city had twelve foundations, and in them the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. Ah, there we go. So, all right, back to Revelation chapter 4, verse 4. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats, and upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. So, yeah, if you had the twelve, uh, the heads of the twelve tribes of Israel, that would be the Old Testament, and then you have, you know, the twelve apostles, that would be the New Testament, right? I don't know. I did a Bible study on it. I could be wrong. I've been wrong before. A lot. Verse 5. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices, and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. And before the throne there was a sea of glass like unto crystal, and in the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. And the first beast was like a lion, and the second beast like a calf, and the third beast had a face as a man, and the fourth beast like a flying eagle. Where do we read about that? Uh, let's see, in Ezekiel chapter 10, verse 14, and everyone had four faces. The first face was the face of a cherub, and the second face was the face of a man, and the third the face of a lion, and the fourth the face of an eagle. Ezekiel 1.10 And as for the likeness of their faces, the four had the face of a man and the face of a lion on the right side, and they four had the face of an ox on the left side. They four also had the face of an eagle. So this is some type of a, well, it says it was a cherub. So some type of an angel. If memory serves me correctly, um, the um, like the uh, ox and uh, lion was the animal symbol of Judah, if memory serves me correctly. Remember, Jesus is called the lion of the tribe of Judah. The ox was the symbol of one of the other tribes, I forget. Uh, but if you look at the way the Lord set up the children of Israel by their tribe when they were in the wilderness, it makes a cross. There were three to the north, three to the south, three to the east, three to the west. It was a, like a plus sign, a cross. So, and one of them was the uh, was their symbol was an ox I don't remember which one but each tribe had a uh, so you had the north three tribes the south three tribes the east three tribes and the west three tribes and uh, each one had a a symbol that they went by I guess there was like one tribe that was like the uh, the main tribe for that group. So if anybody thinks of that, point it out because I, I don't want to waste time looking for it. All right, let's go to... See, now that's the thing. Um, you know, the Old Testament tells you what these cherubs look like. And then when you get to the New Testament, you know, here you go, a beast... A beast was like a lion and a calf and a man and a eagle. But then you, when you read in Ezekiel, you find out it was a cherub. It was a type of angel. All right, verse 8. And the four beasts, Revelation 4, 8, and the four beasts had each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. Why do they say that three times? Holy, holy, holy. Simple. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Simple. 
Remember, God made man in his image. Man has a body, a soul, and a spirit. And then you got the Jehovah's Witnesses, W-I-T-L-E-S-S-E-S, because they lost their wits. They'll say, oh no, God is one. He can't be three. Well, I always try to ask them, well, do you have a body? Do you have a soul? Do you have a spirit? Well, I don't know. The watchtower tells me this, so I, I can't believe whatever the Bible says. Whatever, dude. Holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. And when those beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him. Ah, maybe that's what we need to do. Give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne, who liveth forever and ever. The four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne, and worship him that liveth forever and ever, and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, here's the punchline, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. So the Lord created all things, and for his pleasure. So if, if everything's for his pleasure, maybe we need to give him glory and honor and thanks. What do you think? And worship. I think that's a pretty good idea. In Job 21 and verse 30, it says that the wicked is reserved to the day of destruction. They shall be brought forth to the day of wrath. Isaiah 45 and verse 7. The Lord speaking. I form the light and create darkness. Well, what is darkness? It's just the absence of light. You know, what is cold? The absence of heat. The absence of warmth, right? I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. Didn't the Lord create the devil? He didn't create him evil. He created him good. But the devil decided to, well, let's just say he wasn't happy with the job that he was given. And uh, he wanted to be boss. And, well, he had a plan, but it didn't go quite the way he thought it would. And uh, he got demoted. Let's just say, yeah, he got demoted. And uh, eventually, he's going to get fired. In the flames, of course. Now, let's go to Job chapter 38. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, verse 2, Who is this that darkeneth counsel by words without knowledge? In other words, what are you talking about? You don't know what you're talking about, dude. That's the Bob translation. Verse 3, Gird up now thy loins like a man. In other words, put on your pants like a man. For I will demand of thee, and answer thou me. Where was thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare, if thou hast understanding. So, where were you when I made the earth? Where were you? Who hath laid the measures thereof, if thou knowest? Or who hath stretched the line upon it? Those are construction terms, people. Whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened? Or who laid the cornerstone thereof? You know, it's funny, Christ is considered the cornerstone in the New Testament. 
So it's funny that it mentions that there. When the morning stars, verse 7, when the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Now, Bible scholars that I trust will tell you that the morning stars and sons of God is a reference to angels. Now, if they shouted for joy and sang together at the creation of the earth, they had to exist prior to the earth being formed, created, right? Had to. I mean, that's just the way it is. The Bible's the book of Adam, the race of Adam. And when you read Genesis chapter 1, uh, verse 31, Genesis 1, 31, And God saw everything that he had made, okay, and behold, it was very good, very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. And then on the seventh day, the Lord rested. Not because he was tired, but as an example to us to take a day off, a day of rest, to reflect upon the Lord. That's what the Sabbath day was for. Even Christ said, uh, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. Now, why am I pointing this out? Well, because up to this point, the Lord had created the angels. The Lord had created the earth. Six days later, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, on, I believe the Lord created Adam on the sixth day. Some people believe in an eighth day creation. Eh, maybe. I don't know. I mean, there's, it's, to me, it's kind of vague either way. Uh, if you believe in an eighth day creation, I won't condemn you, but, you know, I just believe in six days. I think that's everything that the Lord created. I don't know. But I think the angels were created prior to the earth. And then God saw on the sixth day after he created the earth that he saw everything it made and it was good. So I think Satan was created good. And that's my proof. That's my proof text right there. God created everything good. But then Satan fell. Did God create evil? Well, God created Satan good. And then he fell. So technically God created evil. So, all right, let's, uh, let's take a look. So in Revelation 4.11, it said, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for Thou hast created all things, and for Thy pleasure they are and were created. You know what I really love is uh, Ephesians 1.4. According as he hath chosen us, chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Do you know that God chose us before he even created the earth? I mean, that is some deep, heavy stuff. Um. Uh, so, let's see. Matthew 25, 34. Then shall the king, Christ, say unto them on his right hand, Come ye, blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Now, I'm not a Calvinist. Um, I do believe in election. Uh, I don't follow Calvin. I've read very, very little of his work. I know he was involved in the Geneva Bible, which I used to have a copy, and I read it somewhat. But, uh, you know, God forbid you believe in election, and God having a chosen people, and God forbid you believe they're Christians. Oh, no, you know, that, that don't fly in the churches. You know, that doesn't fly in the pre-trib rapture churches. 
Now, you got you to gotta believe that the Antichrist over in the Middle East, and I'm not talking about the Arabs, you got to believe those are the chosen people. You know, the, the ones that uh, reject Christ? Yeah. But, uh, you know, yeah, and they say that uh, uh, me believing Christians are the God's chosen people and them believing the Antichrist is the chosen people, and they say that I'm teaching heresy. Right. Well, I guess, uh, well, you know, if they worship Satan, maybe they are his chosen people. What do you think? Revelation 13, 8. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. And they're talking about the Antichrist here, the, the beast, the man of sin, the sinner of perdition. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Did you know that Christ was the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world? Oh yeah, I say that at the end of a lot of the Bible studies, right? Yeah. I mean, God created Satan good, knowing full well he would fall, and created knowing that we would fall into sin, but created a way out for us. Wow. I mean, is that insane? No. That's planning. God's perfect plan. All right, let's finish this up. Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 4. The Lord hath made all things for himself, yea, even the wicked, even the wicked, for the day of evil. Psalms 147 and verse 11. The Lord taketh pleasure in them that fear him, in those that hope in his mercy. Boy, I'm hoping for his mercy. I'll tell you what. I don't deserve it, but I'm hoping for it. Psalms 149 and verse 4. For the Lord taketh pleasure in his, his people. For the Lord taketh pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meek with salvation. Romans 8.28 Boy, I tell you what, I had a, um, I was an unbeliever big time. I was a heretic, and I had a motorcycle, and I was working uh, the afternoon shift. Got off around midnight. Went and had breakfast at Denny's with my then girlfriend, and uh, you know, going home. I think it was like around one thirty. 2.30 in the morning, somewhere in that time period. I'm on Interstate 95, and I got rear-ended by a car on a motorcycle on the interstate. Um, I mean, you know, I had three doctors tell me I'd never walk unassisted again. Two of them were the two of the top three uh, uh, orthopedic people in the county. And, uh, you know, I thought, oh, great. I'm going to be a freaking cripple for the rest of my life. And, uh, you know, I thought, wow, this is insane. And then I got really sick from um, uh, the antibiotics. I mean, deathly sick. I had an internal fungal infection. And uh, I was so sick, I wanted to die. I actually uh, put a gun to my head one time. That's how sick I was. I had a headache for six weeks. I mean, a bad headache for six weeks. It didn't go away for six weeks. I mean, I did. I wanted to die. So I went to a doctor, uh, well, a fake doctor, uh, a you-know-who, one of the chosenites. And there was a couple in there, and they... 
I was talking to them about the New World Order because, you know, being I got sick, I found out about the, um, the cures for a lot of diseases that the uh, medical establishment was hiding from us. And then I found out about the, uh, you know, the medical establishment traced it back to the banks and the banks went everywhere to the media and everywhere else. Um, well, actually, I found out about the media first, but I uh, found out about the new world odor and um, it stinks to high heaven. And uh, I was telling these people about you know, oh yeah, they got cures for cancer and this and that and the other. And they're like, yeah, we know. And, uh, you know, I was telling them about the uh, the one world coming government. And they're like, oh yeah, Bob, that's that's in the Bible. I'm rolling my eyes going, oh no, Bible people. Ugh. Well, lo and behold, they witnessed to me for a while. And uh, they gave me a took a piece of paper, I don't know, out of the lady's purse, I suppose, and wrote down a bunch of Bible verses that they rattled off from the top of their head. I went to the hotel room after I got out of the doctor's office uh, trying to get this treatment that the government won't allow in this country. And I looked up all the verses, and that was the, that was the night that I realized that the Bible prophecy was coming true. And boy, I'll tell you what, I repented big time. So, Romans 8.28. And I thought I was going to be crippled and, and wanted to die. And what did Paul say? And we know that all things, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. I didn't love God then. To them who are the called according to his purpose. So I guess I had a purpose. And I guess this is it. YouTube. You know, I used to write for a newspaper, Christian newspaper, small circulation. I had a radio show. That didn't work very good. Actually, I had two radio shows. One up in Kentucky and one up in, um, one here in South Florida. That radio station's now Spanish speaking. So, yeah. What are you going to do? Revelation 5.13. Well, now you know my story. My story's not as, it's not important, but I thought, you know. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Revelation 5.13 And every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as in the sea and such as are in the sea and all that are in them heard I saying blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. 1 Peter 5, 4, And when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. And didn't we just read this? No. Revelation 5, 12, Saying with a, live, a loud voice, Saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power, and riches, and wisdom, and strength, and honor, and glory, and blessing. Revelation 7.12, saying, Amen, blessing, and glory, and wisdom, and thanksgiving, and honor, and power, and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. And Psalms 8.6, Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet. And let's close this out with uh, Malachi chapter 4 and verse 1. I 
love this. Of course, I love all the scriptures, but, well, Jeremiah is kind of depressing, but it is what it is. Well, before we read Malachi, let's read 2 Peter verse three and verse, uh, chapter 3 and verse 10. Uh, those that are in the Hebrew roots garbage, uh, they'll tell you that 2 Peter doesn't belong in the Bible. It's fake. That's, you know, because they don't like that uh, Peter acknowledges Paul as a brother in the faith. They hate Paul. Of course, they really hate Jesus, too. But they don't call him Jesus because they have Yeshua. I don't know. Sorry, Atomic. That's not a blast at you. Uh, but, uh, yeah, when I've been reading some of the um, some of the Hebrew roots stuff, uh, I just can't believe that their Yeshua is Jesus. I just can't believe it. I just, I have a hard time. So, all I know is the Gabriel angel, the angel Gabriel gave Christ, well, Jesus his name to Mary. At least that's what my Bible says. So, I, I can't, yeah. All right, Second Peter 3.10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. With that in mind, let's go to Malachi chapter 4, verse 1. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven. All and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. What's stubble? It's something you worthless that you burn. And the day that cometh shall burn them up saith the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and ye shall go forth and grow up as calf, calves of the stall. And ye shall tread down. What is that? treading down. Uh, you're, it means walking. And ye shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet in the day that I shall do this, saith the Lord of hosts. For me, it won't come soon enough for the wicked to be burned up All right, everybody, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. All glory and honor to them. In Jesus' precious name, amen.